All right, folks, out here in my smoking hot garage. Uh, I'm going to have to handhold the camera here uh, to give you guys an idea of what's going on. But here, I'll just pan back here for a second real quick and show you kind of what I have set up here. Um, basically, the purpose of the video is uh, one of the things I've been trying to do is figure out how to run stereo to the front of the house and then how to monitor in stereo uh, on stage. And so there's you know, really kind of a couple different ways that you could accomplish that but I've been messing around um, here in the garage. So basically what I have here in the, in the, in the rack and then the two AW speakers, um, I kind of, I go back and forth between an acoustic gig and then playing an electric gig. So in the acoustic gig, everything that you see in the rack there is what I take to the acoustic gig. Um, and I, I have another video up that's kind of talks a little bit more after I just got the Kemper unit, how I was setting that up and using that. But basically, I just run uh, a wireless. You can see I'm, I'm wired in right now, but down here in my drawer, I've got a wireless over there. And I got a cable that comes out and plugs into the to the Kemper. But right now I'm just running direct because I'm just doing testing and stuff, not wasting any batteries. Um, so for my acoustic gig, run wireless, go in. Uh, I come out uh, into, into two channels here on the mixer. And so you can see I'm selected on channel 13 right now. And if you look at the pan, I'm panned hard all the way to the left. And then if I switch to the other channel, you see I'm panned right there is the pan button right there, left, and then panned all the way to the right. And so that's how I run uh, the acoustic rig. And I tell you what, it sounds amazing. I don't use any profiles or any patches. I mean, I do use a patch, but I turn the amp and the cabinet simulation off for the acoustic, just run the acoustic signal straight through and then run out into my two AW cabinets, which are you know set up on stands and everything. And then uh, I'll use one of the, I kind of have several different monitors to choose from. I got a couple different monitors there. I've got a small little Flexus FM8, a little eight inch coaxial monitor that I like to use. And then I just monitor, you know, mainly just to get some vocals and get a little bit of the guitar back. But uh, running the, with the stereo effects, especially like the reverbs and the, and the swelling delays and the panning delays and things like that, uh, running that through my acoustic, it sounds amazing. But I'm, that's what I'm talking about today. Uh, talking about the the electric rig and so I'll try to handhold them I'm actually just playing I just I bought this I just got this guitar you never if you've never uh, seen these or play with these before it's the callings uh, 290 it's a uh, basically like a Les Paul the callings version of a Les Paul special and it sounds amazing to this rig um, so basically what I'm doing here is simulating, just like I am for the, for the electric environment, I'm simulating as though I am sending, I want to run a stereo rig on stage and I'm sending my stereo outputs to the front of house. And so this is the mixer and this is what's coming to the front of house. But then these two speakers over here um, are, I'm using them to run like my stereo on stage um, uh, monitoring so these would be two powered monitors actually these would be the cabinets that I would take when I would go to a gig um, but I don't have four of those I only have two of them so I'm just using some other powered monitors that I have uh, so this is basically like my monitoring rig over here and this is the front of house rig and so um, you know essentially the way this works is again I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make noise with the guitar I'm gonna hold this thing so I can't so nothing's turned on right now you can see the master for the so that's the front of house and right now I don't have any of the monitoring turned on I'll talk about that here in a second but this is now one of the things that's really interesting about this and you'll see here when I show you on the on the screen but if I go you can see over here this is my channel and I'm at 5 dB on the channel and you can see how much I'm pushing that and I believe I have that set and I need to change that but I have it set for my acoustic rig so if I go to the output section here you'll see if I go here you'll see that's set with the main volume at 12 minus 12 dB um, so uh, so yeah so you'd need to lower that a little bit because the thing you got to think you're worried about there is, um, you know, sending too much signal to the front of house. And then the front of house engineer is like, you know, what do I do with that? I barely can turn the gain control up and you're way too loud. 
So I, I really, you can probably back that off to about 18 um, and, then, uh, and then you're good to go. But the thing that I wanted to show here is, and I'm really sorry for the, for the super choppy video, but if you come back, so what I did here was I clicked on, over here I clicked on the output section and then there's a page button here, All right? So the things that you're gonna control are the main outputs. So if you look on the back, I have the non-powered Kemper. Um, so if you look on the back, there's a main output section and you got XLR outputs and quarter inch outputs and those all work. So one option would be uh, to, to send XLR to the front of house and then to come out quarter inch to whatever you're monitoring on stage, the disadvantage of doing that would be you'd have to control the volume on the speakers themselves. So if it was a powered speaker, uh, you'd have to control the actual volume on the speaker. So if you're trying to monitor and or trying to turn up a little bit in the middle of a song or the middle of a set or something like that, then it could be a little bit more problematic to reach behind speakers or wherever the volume pedal is or wherever the volume is on the speaker versus just being able to come over here and use this button here. Um, so, but one, one of the things you can see is, so for the main outputs, I have that set for master stereo. So when I send left and right to the front of house, he's gonna get left and right. He's gonna do a hard pan just like I have and it's gonna sound amazing. Now the other option that you have here um, are these other outputs. And so you can see that you can change these to different things. So we've got master mono here, but I want that to be master right. So now what I have it set as, the, master, the uh, monitor output is the left signal and the direct output is the right signal. So if you look at the back, those are both quarter inch outputs, which is kind of a bummer uh, because you know a lot of speakers don't have the, um, the dual XLR quarter inch connectors, unfortunately, like these AWs here don't have that. They just have the XLR connector. So I had to buy um, quarter inch to male XLRs to be able to use these outputs to use them for my speakers. So be a heads up for that. There's no, for the monitor and for the direct, there's only quarter inch outputs. Um, and of course for the mains you get, uh, either you could choose. And so what's happening now is if I just exit out of all this, get back to my thing. So now you can see if you remember up here, this was, you know, I got this turned up here. That's my front of house. He's controlling that up there. But now I've got this knob that controls this So I know you probably can't hear it or, or I mean, I certainly can hear it, but hearing the stereo of the effects in the two speakers. So you get that nice, you know, stereo panning or whatever that you have for that delay. So, um, so anyway, that's how that works. If you were thinking about how to do that, um, how to do a stereo monitoring on stage and then still send stereo to uh, the front of house as well, that'd be the easiest way to do that. And then of course you just would have, if you needed to turn up your, your volume on stage, you would just have one, um, one knob to be able to handle that. So anyway, I hope that was helpful um, for those of you that are looking to do something similar.